So, and that's why I don't think web browsers are going to disappear because they're so perfectly malleable. Right. And you know, the power of HTML being able to view the source and tweak it a little bit and put it back out there and do your own thing. That's a huge thing. And applications aren't quite like that. Rich applications aren't quite like that. Um, there's something about this being a rectangle of content and being on this blank canvas. Um, I will say, having said that, that there are lots of things that we think you need, that need to get better. Um, you know, so I find that I look at so much content today that it's hard to find where we go back to. And so one of the things we talked about is that we we're starting to change the way you look at the URL bar. And so now if I type, you know, it used to be if you typed the URL, I'm sorry, it would try to autocomplete. But now if I type, you know, you know, Yahoo, it'll go and figure out what things had Y-H-O-O in the title and tell me what they are. If I type um, icon. So it'll go, this is what we call the awesome bar. And so it'll go find any, anywhere where you looked at icon already, it'll say, here's the sites, or weather, there's a lot. Now if I type weather, I don't even remember that it's weather.com or weather underground or whatever. I type weather, and I, I mouse down to where, where it is. And so I think that make sense making is a browser. Yeah. So you, it's sort of like what real names used to do back in the day where it would find. Yeah, so this, this is local, and real names is network. network. Right. And the, the difference is that you've got so much information that's coming on your own local machine now that, and so what we find is that more and more people started their browsing session with a Google search. They say, oh, I went to this gene site earlier to buy jeans. Like, like what kind of was it? Was, um, it was, you know, Lucky Brand. Here's Lucky Brand jeans. I go to Google search and find where I was, um, which is okay, but that's a general search against the whole web, and you, you know you've already seen it. And so there's no reason you shouldn't just look at the places you've been to find it. So uh, I think that sense making is one of them. Helping you figure out the difference between your data and networked data is another another thing that the browser can help you do. Um, and this is your history. Your searching your history is different than doing searching the Google corpus. Mm -hmm. and it knows more about you. Um, I think that the third thing is I think the better handling of media uh, needs to happen. So again, the problem with the the problem. With Mozilla, from a press point of view, it's number one that the chief doesn't make any decisions. It's it's all distributed decision making. So these are projects on the top of the web, right? It's more important than that. The the other problem is that we're all doing all the work out in the open. So there's no like, you know, here's a big mass initiative we have. Um, having said that, Firefox is focused for us. So you know, Firefox, the next web, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, mobile Firefox matters a lot. Uh, our embedding technology uh, from Mozilla 2, which we call Gecko, um, and that enables things like. Is Gecko 2.0 or 1.9? Well, Gecko 1.9 is in Firefox 3. Um, Are you talking about Gecko 2.0? Yeah, it's going to be called Mozilla 2, but yeah. yeah. Um, uh, with a new virtual machine, also. So, um, so that, and that matters because, you know, software uses it. Uh, uh, Camino uses it. Lots and lots of people use our language. Our goal is not to take down every closed source company. Yeah, but goal. like you keep them honest. Yeah, but like, I think we did this because we believe in the web. The web is the thing. Um, so, I mean, we do those things like we're thinking about um, mobile quite a lot, and working on mobile, and we're working on. Um, and, and I really think that mobile, there's a battle going, which is. Whether it's the mobile web or the mobile web looks like the regular web. Because the mobile web is a, is a controlled ecosystem where the carrier and the manufacturer and these guys all have <laughs> experience. But the web isn't like that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a fallacy of the world to kind of label it mobile web. I've labeled it mobile web many times. It's just internet without wires, basically. That's what people really want. They don't but I don't. That. But, the, but it's not really out there. It's not looking that way industry structurally. So uh, right now, like I said, like if, you're, if you want to put up a web service today, like you don't have to ask anybody, you just stick it up there. To have an application on an iPhone, you've got to go get a certificate from Apple to do it. And so, like I think that, and you know, and the iPhone, like again, it's much about my iPhone, like it doesn't have Flash, which is, you know, it, it's not the open web. Mm -hmm. So I think that the question is whether 
the mobile web really is a distinct thing, right. or it, it's just web without wires. Yeah. And it's not obvious to me which one's going to win right now. Right. So we care a lot about that. We're launching Firefox 3 soon. Okay. You should worry about that. Okay. When are you launching it? Uh, sometime in June. We'll do, I think we'll do the release candidate quickly. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I'll use it. <laughs> How's that? Well, you, we should, you should try it. If it crashes, you should tell me. Okay. I will it shouldn't be crashing. I'll, of course I'll tell you. Thank you, though. That's a very generous offer. What's that? A generous offer, of course. I need to take support for many members of my family. <laughs> well, thank you.